A landslide victory for funding Arlington's proposed new high school. The vote wasn't even close. We'll have the latest from town meeting. Major awards for two groups of talented young filmmakers from Arlington High. C-SPAN comes all the way from our nation's capital to honor their incredible work. How does our town manager fare when it comes to job performance? The select board reviews on Adam Chapdelaine are in, and it appears he could qualify for Town Employee of the Year. And 21 students from Arlington Sister City in Japan have a little fun on television, and apparently for them, good times never seem so good. This is ACMI News. Hello, and welcome to this week's edition of ACMI News. I'm Carla Dorado. And I'm Moses Small. Thank you for joining us. It's an overwhelming victory for the proposed new high school at town meeting. <laughs> We have an affirmative vote, 208 in favor, against 10 against. It, the vote carries. Representatives voted 21 to 1 in favor of funding a new Arlington High School. The landslide decision followed a presentation by the High School Building Committee, showing an animated fly-through of the proposed building. The Arlington State Delegation was also there with Senator Cindy Friedman. She said, if funding for the new school gets voted down, Arlington would likely pay the entire cost. No town has ever been offered funding again after backing out of the state's school building authority process. Proponents touted the building's flexibility and open learning's commons area. Others criticized the loss of the 1915 Fusco House, exterior columns, and clock tower. Historic preservation gives life and meaning to buildings, landscapes, and history that would otherwise be lost. Arlington's few remaining historic buildings and open spaces are integral to the fabric of our lives. My colleagues and I decided a new school was best for three reasons. Number one, logistics. To renovate the existing would house students in modular classrooms for an extended period of time at a cost of $5 million unreimbursed by the state. Secondly, cost, $25 million was the difference between new construction and renovation addition. Lastly is function. Once you get past the facades, which have sentimental value to many people in this room and the community, myself included, but once you get past those facades, there's no there there. By maintaining them, we would embed the inefficiencies of the existing plant into the new facility. In my view, that was unconscionable. Voters will make the ultimate decision on June 11th. They'll be asked to approve spending $291 million on the new school, with the state kicking in $86 million of the cost. After undergoing weeks of restorative justice, Lieutenant Rick Pedrini has been back on the police force for nearly a month. You might recall, Pedrini was placed on administrative leave for what Arlington leaders called irresponsible comments published in the law journal Sentinel last year. This week, Pedrini released a public apology. It reads in part, I've learned a lot from this experience about how the words I wrote created severe unintended harm. I've always strived to represent the department in a positive light and never to bring discredit to the department. In this case, I failed to do so, and I'm deeply disappointed in myself. I take full responsibility for my actions. Pedrini is now working under the supervision of Acting Chief Julianne Flaherty, who is responsible for enforcing the terms of Pedrini's return. You can find the full apology on the Arlington website, arlingtonma.gov. Arlington had a high-ranking visitor at police headquarters this week, and he's giving Arlington's law enforcement community high marks. U.S. Surgeon General Jerome Adams marked National Drug Take Back Day, a biannual event aimed at providing residents with easy ways to discard expired or unwanted prescription drugs. For years now, Arlington's police department has served as a national model for community policing and its more compassionate approach to drug enforcement. The force is among the first in the nation with an opiate outreach initiative, an approach allowing police officers to get directly involved with a heroin and opioid crisis. The Surgeon General commended Arlington Police for working with known substance users, their loved ones, and the community. 
And uh, I just never want to miss an opportunity to lift up a best practice across the country. And Arlington really is leading the country in terms of police officers working with communities and health professionals to lift up people suffering from substance use disorder and also to prevent people from going down an unfortunate pathway in the first place. And uh, some people know my story. My uh, little brother is actually in prison right now in Maryland uh, due to crimes he committed to support his addiction. And I often think if only he'd had resources available to him, like the resources that Arlington Police Department are making available to people in Massachusetts, uh, maybe he wouldn't have been in the unfortunate situation he's in. The Surgeon General says 80% of the nation's heroin users started out using prescribed opiates and that many of them came from someone else's medicine cabinet. Town manager Adam Chapdelaine isn't going away anytime soon. He recently got rave reviews from the town select board. AC Mod Jeff Barnd talked to Mr. Chapdelaine about his outstanding grades from town leaders. No doubt the town of Arlington has undergone some major changes in recent months. The controversy over the debt exclusion for the new high school and the override to keep Arlington progressing. The bus rapid transit program along Mass Ave. The untimely passing of a select board member and the recent election of a new face in the town's executive branch. All this under the tutelage of town manager Adam Chapdelaine, who answers to the select board. Last month, the select board gave superior reviews to Adam Chapdelaine here at Town Hall. Now, Adam Chapdelaine first had to give a self-evaluation to the select board. And then after that, the select board submitted individual reviews on qualities that it was looking for in a town manager. Things like operational leadership, public relations, financial management, and even personal characteristics. The select board could score anywhere between one and five, five of course being excellent. And in the end, Adam Chapdelaine received a score of 4.7 out of five from Arlington Select Board. I feel good and it's good to know that they like the job that I'm doing and they hopefully want to keep me around. That's already a given. Arlington's town manager signed a three-year contract earlier this year. Select board members say Arlington is fortunate to have such a competent manager. Overall, we all feel, you, you know, you're the perfect five, um, but uh, I, I agree with you that it's nice to, maybe not so much, I wouldn't say criticism, but just areas where myself individually, I feel like um, there's something more I needed and, you know, what, what did I not do that you needed to hear? To, so it's reciprocal. So. They also have some uh, critical feedback, which helps me continue to get better, and I appreciate that as well. But I think most importantly, uh, it's a team effort. Uh, I get to be the person that sits in the room and works with the select board every other week and then speak a lot before town meeting. But we're blessed here with a great team of department heads and a great staff right down to the lowest levels who work hard to try to do what they can for the people of Arlington every day. Adam Chapdelaine's current contract runs for the next three years through February 2022. For ACMI News, I'm Jeff Barn. The Arlington Center for the Arts is losing Linda Shoemaker, the ACA's executive De director for the last 16 years. On the ACA website, the board of directors expressed nothing but gratitude for Linda's unparalleled guidance and leadership since 2003. She has played a critical role in the development and success of the ACA. Under Shoemaker, the arts facility found a beautiful new home in the center of Arlington. Shoemaker led a successful $1 million capital campaign for the ACA, and it was during this time ACMI News talked to Linda about artistic expression, why art is so important to a community, and the individuals it serves. You know, I feel like what artists can do for us is really help us think more broadly, more deeply, to feel into the experiences of other people and other cultures. And through the mediums of film and theater and music and the visual arts, I feel like over the last couple of months, the Art Center has really been able to shine a light, give some new perspective, give some you know new stuff to be thinking about for all of us as we engage every night, turn on the news, and it's just so challenging and so contentious, and everything feels so divided and broken. But what I see as the artists come together and really talk and reflect and share their work, there's so much positive, there's so much good, and the artists really have helped us to see that. In the upcoming months, the ACA board will conduct a search for a successor. Linda Shoemaker will be leaving in mid-June.
The Cable Satellite Public Affairs Network, better known as C-SPAN, held a contest for young filmmakers. Three groups of filmmakers from Massachusetts received honorable mention, and two of these Bay State groups attend Arlington High School. I was at Arlington High when these students received the gold, and who knows, this may be the first step to an Oscar. Imagine winning a National Film Award before graduating high school. That's what happened to four Arlington students who won recognition in the C-SPAN Student Cam Competition. C-SPAN holds this contest every year to celebrate young movie makers, and it highlighted two student films made in town. This year's theme explored the Bill of Rights and what it means to be an American. The network recognized Samuel Monks and Michael Graham Green for their film, Locally Sourced Government. We wanted to show uh, to people why um, local government helps us and why other people should focus on it more. The actions in the the legislation that comes out of the Bill of Rights is exemplified in the actions of our local officials every day. C-SPAN judged 3,000 student films from 48 states, and about 3% of them won honorable mentions. Local government officials like State Congresswoman Catherine Clark came to honor the filmmakers. Michael Graham Greene thinks these films are important because they highlight the ways local government affects daily life. Yeah, I think a lot of people underestimate the, the power a local government has. Uh, like, if, if a piece of uh, federal legislation gets passed, you may not notice for a while, but if your trash suddenly starts not getting picked up, you're going to notice immediately, and that's something that's very important to you in the moment. Arlington High School student Serena Bernstein teamed up with her classmate Mia Umali to produce a film called The Evolution of Modern News. The students worked long hours to beat the odds for C-SPAN recognition. Bernstein says the effort was worth it for the chance to raise awareness about important and modern issues. We wanted people to kind of think about how media plays a role in their lives and it's just important that people kind of think about what media they're consuming and what information they're consuming so that they can really be an informed citizen and it not get partisan information. It's amazing the difference between the, uh, the, the rough cuts and the final cuts. It, look amazing. And then obviously to see them win this and um, I'm so proud of them and so it's really cool. Over 6,000 student filmmakers took part in this year's student cam competition and now Arlington has four winners. For ACMI News in Arlington, I'm Moses Small. You may already know that Arlington has a sister city on the other side of the planet, Nagahokakyo, Japan. What you may not know is that 21 students from our sister city spent time at ACMI Studio A singing the Bosox World Famous Bottom of the Eighth Inning song. 16 middle school students and five high schoolers from Japan belting out Neil Diamond's immortal Sweet Caroline. One of the founders of this marvelous exchange program tells ACMI News this is an ideal way for young people to see how other cultures live, work, learn, and play. <laughs> Listen to this. They've never been to the TV studio before, even in Japan, it's very difficult to enter. Okay, so um, this is the, the first experience for all of them. A marvelous way to warm the hearts and enrich the minds of students from two very different cultures. Programs like this cause everyone to realize we have so much more in common, even though some of us live half a world away. 
This sounds like a beautiful opportunity for all these kids. I mean, I wish one of these talented, talented kids would teach me how to pronounce that town name. I wish they'd just teach you how to sing. I could do both. <laughs> you could, I'm sure you could. <laughs> Coming up on the other side of the break, what better way to celebrate a rain date for Earth Day, which actually took place last month? Arlington High students celebrated our third planet from the sun, despite some cloud cover. Everyone had an organically splendid time. We'll take you there next. Stay with us. It's a short ride from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. Bill's greatest passion is the opera. Bill has about 20 million opera albums. Many, many, many versions of every opera. 20 million albums. And he is totally obsessed. Figaro. Hi, I'm Bill. In the years that I have known him, I don't think I've ever seen him be mean. He's one of the kindest people I've ever known. The person who is so important to Bill is Nikki, his neighbor across the hall. Donna is a very, very nice woman. She's very giving. She loves Bill and likes to help him. She stops in all the time. You know, she brings him food. Donna helps him with his paperwork and Bill paying. At this point, I, I think that Nikki and I are really Bill's family. And we are in all ways that matter. Apparently, I had a stroke at the opera. <laughs> I was with Donna, poor thing. And that was a very frightening, obviously, and distressing experience. He seems very frail. He's, he's a bit unsteady on his feet, and his capacity is diminished. It frightens me that eventual deterioration may rob him of things that he still finds pleasurable. I always feel uh, like I'm imposing, and, you know, they'll ask me, can I get you anything at the store? And I think, oh, I don't want to send them through all that. But they've coaxed me into doing it <laughs> anyway. We insist. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, they've just taken over. It's wonderful. I like to get him soup. I, I like soup, and I know all the good places in the city that get soup. They're gorgeous. Uh, they're smart. And I enjoy them immensely. It's almost overwhelming to list their virtues. I obviously get something out of it. I mean, there's no question that, that we have a history. And, and when you're continuing to interact with someone with whom you've been interacting for 40 years, it's like a gift. I love you both. Love you too, pal. <laughs> we love you Thank so you. much. <laughs> Thank you. All that really matters is shelter, food, and if you get to have friends, how lucky you are. Yes, yes indeed. I do believe that your friends become your family. It's a wonderful world, and I'm very happy to be in it still. Figaro, 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 Somewhere there's broken glass. <laughs> Students at Arlington High are celebrating sustainability. Earth Day was last month, but surprise, the Earth's propensity for rain caused Arlington High to postpone the festivities until this week. This is Arlington High School's Earth Day Fair. There were ping pong matches, badminton games, even croquet, and several exhibitors were on hand as well, all celebrating the natural wonders of this marvelous planet. We wanted to celebrate Earth Day, um, which occurred last week, um, but this was a good day that we could reschedule it to. And um, we invited all the environmental clubs to be a part of it. So the Sustainability Club, the SAVE Club, and the Zero Waste Advisory Group, all um, student-run groups here at the high school that promote different various sustainability initiatives. Rachel Olaveri says we can expect another AHS Earth Day Fair in 2020, since turnout this year was good. A lot of spring activities taking shape at Arlington High this week. Here's Sagar Astogi with this week's Ponderscope. Welcome to the Ponderscope, your Arlington High School news, updates, and more. This weekend, Arlington High School will be holding their annual Pops concert at Town Hall. 
This year the theme is Movie Night, and will include theme songs from various classics such as Avengers, Harry Potter, Star Wars, and more. The performances will be on Saturday at 7pm and Sunday at 2pm. The concert will feature a variety of AHS musical groups, including orchestra, band, chorus, honors orchestra, jazz band, and the Magical Singers. Tickets will be sold at the door for $10, and there will be refreshments available as well. AP exams will be administered beginning next week from May 6th to May 10th, and from May 13th to May 17th. Make sure to visit the College Board website for the exam schedule and further details. If you have any questions or concerns, contact Mr. Thornton in the Column House office. The annual Arlington High School Talent Show will be held on Friday, May 17th in the Low Auditorium from 7 to 9 p.m. All students and faculty are invited to perform. The sign-up link is posted on the Daily Post and has also been sent to your spy partner's email. The deadline to register is next Wednesday, May 8th. The National Honor Society is organizing a book drive for the African Library Project to help a primary community library in Kenya. They're looking for donations of your new or gently used books or monetary donations. The drive will be run all throughout the month of May. Collection boxes will be located in the AHS main lobby and at each of the elementary schools. For more information, visit africanlibraryproject.org. I'm Sagar Astogi, and this has been the Ponder Scope. <laughs> A lot of spy ponder sports action. Here's Nick Antonakis with this week's ACMI Sports Update from Studio B. Hello Arlington sports lovers and welcome to your ACMI Sports Update. The Athletics Department at Arlington High School hosted an incoming freshman information session for students and parents earlier this week. Attendees were welcomed by faculty, coaches, and current Spy Ponders captains to discuss the positive impact of high school athletics, as well as what it takes to be a successful young athlete. Registration for the fall season begins on May 28th and ends on June 21st. If you're interested in joining a Spy Ponder team in the fall, be sure to head to the Arlington Athletics page when the registration opens to begin the process. Coming up in next week's home matchups, on Tuesday, May 7th at 4 p.m., you can find boys volleyball going up against Lincoln Sudbury and boys tennis against Wilmington. Over on the field, boys lacrosse will take on Wilmington at 4.15. On Wednesday, May 8th at 4 p.m., girls tennis welcomes Burlington and boys baseball and girls softball will match up against Wilmington. And on Friday, May 10th, be sure to catch boys volleyball take on Westford Academy at 4 p.m. From ACMI Sports, I'm Nick Antonakis from Studio B. Back to you at Studio A. And of course, stay with us for all your latest news and sports updates. That'll do it for us here in Studio A. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Moses Small. And this is Moses' last newscast with us here at ACMI. And I'm very thankful for this experience, not only for wonderful people like Carla sitting right beside me, but everyone behind the camera who you may not see directly in this production. Mm. Well, I'm Carla Dorado, and I'll see you next week. You can always check out our latest segments and newscasts on the web at acmi.tv news. And don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at ACMI News. If you have any news tips for us, or you wish to become a citizen journalist, we'd love to hear from you. Email us at news at acmi.tv or stop by our Studio A at 85 Park Avenue.